Hello and welcome to another episode of the Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Bellotti, and today I'm super excited to dive into product-led growth uh, with Wes Bush, who is the author of a book of the same uh, same concept, product-led growth. Uh, Wes, thanks so much for joining today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, why don't you give the audience a quick rundown on, on your background? Yeah, definitely. So... I have been always in demand generation. Nothing actually gets me more excited than creating demand for companies. This is really weird fascination (laughs) for me. But whenever it comes to product-led growth and why I'm actually here, it's just because there is a new way to sell software. And when we look at the the old way of really selling mm-hmm. software, it's pretty typical. You you book the demo, you go through that first meeting and see if you're a good fit. And then if you are, then you go through an even more lengthy process of actually buying this product. And so the cool thing about product like growth is it's really just changing the game in terms of how you buy. Yep. Instead of yep. telling people about the value proposition, you're showing them. And you can do it very quickly with some products. And so that's why I'm so excited about this topic. Yeah. So, and and you've worked with a, a bunch of different like SaaS software type companies helping them with product-led growth. Yes, absolutely. All over the spectrum from 500K to over 500 million. It's been an exciting journey. Yeah, that's great. And so for I, so I know some listeners are like product-led growth. I know what that is. If you're one of those listeners, jump like 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, but for the people out there that like don't really know what this concept means, uh, could you define it? Like, What is product-led growth? Definitely. So product-led growth is nothing new in a lot of ways. And what I mean by that is whenever you want to basically buy a product, let's say we're going to Costco or Whole Foods, like when we get a sample or something, we really get to experience that product and see if it is something that we'd like to buy. And so whenever it comes to software, it's just become so much easier for us to do it where we can actually give people a taste test of what this product experience is all about. And so product-led growth is really a great way for you to try before you buy and really see if it's a good fit for you. Yeah, and so for uh, like I have heard this term become increasingly popular. I'm sure yeah. listeners have also heard it <laughs> more and more. Why is it like? Why is it becoming more popular? Like, why is this the thing that people are doing now and talking about? Definitely. So, product-led growth is really uh, becoming of rising importance for three main reasons. So, the first one is really because it's not getting cheaper to grow a company. If you look at just how uh, less expensive it has become to start a SaaS company, I mean, what might have taken $1 million in investment to grow a SaaS company now takes Mm $10,000. And so there's so many competitors. And what that means is it's just driving up your customer acquisition costs. And so there's just this rising tidal wave of it's not getting easier to grow a business where it's getting easier to build one since a lot of people can do it. And so that's the first main reason why it's becoming a rising importance. Mm -hmm. But the second is really because software isn't as special as it used to be. We look at the willingness to pay for a lot of different products and that's decreasing. So you have on one hand, rising (laughs) costs, other hand, lower willingness to pay. I want everything for free, yeah. (laughs) Like, what are you gonna do? (laughs) And if you're going to follow the same, like, customer acquisition process is a lot of sales led or marketing led companies or it's really expensive you know human powered you got to hire salespeople to sell products it gets very expensive and so if you really want to stand out and dominate your industry you need to find a better way where you can find those customers for a lot more affordable rates and then the last reason is really just because Well, whenever we buy a product, we want to do as much research on our own as possible. And so if you look at the whole customer journey, people now expect whenever they're evaluating a product to actually try it. Even whenever it's multi-million dollar deals for SaaS companies, a lot of companies will still ask, can we try it? And then it's just like, well, why didn't you start off with that? Yeah. Make it easy for them. Yeah. And when, when you think about, you know, who, so to give uh, to give listeners like an anchor point, who are some companies that do a really good job with product led growth? Like when I think about this, who should I parallel this thought process with? Yeah, so I mean, there's so many people who just go to like Slack or Typeform yeah, yeah. and all these companies that have done an absolutely incredible job. But what I'd really challenge companies to do is look for your peers, look for similar companies that are maybe a year or two ahead of you and who are doing product-led growth because then you can really learn from them a much 
better way because when you look at Slack, it almost seems a little too far off for the yeah, average yeah. company. That is the 1% of SaaS companies. And so that's really what I would recommend if you're looking for just that peer for the product that company. Got it. And there, so uh, there's going to be a, a couple groups here listening. One are, uh, is, is people that uh, don't have a product led growth motion or like mm-hmm. don't think about it all the time. Uh, and they're asking themselves, all right, like, great. West, this product left product led growth stuff sounds cool, but like, wh- where do I go from here? What does this mm-hmm. mean? Uh, and then others that are like, yes, product led growth. Like, how do I be better at it? Right. Uh, so why don't we why don't we start with the first one? So you're brand new to product led growth as a concept. Like, where do I begin? How do I get my company on board? Yeah. So the biggest thing, whenever it comes to like, how do you get your business on board, is you really need to identify like what is the main problem. And so at the beginning, we were talking about customer acquisition costs are rising, willingness to pay is going down. People want to self serve and learn as much as they can throughout this whole process. And so the one defining factor that I see that works the best across the board for all companies is just really define the purpose behind product-led growth. What is it that you're running towards? Where is that promised land? Are you really trying to decrease your customer acquisition costs and really create that powerful solution so that you can dominate your market and maybe yeah. even offer a better price than competitors and have a better product? Yeah. That is the, the win zone in any market graph that you'll look at. Create a better product and get it out to as many people as possible for a good price. And so that's really what I would recommend for companies, just to find that purpose of what are you running towards for that business. And when you do roll it out, and this gets a little bit more tactical, you don't have to go full on and just introduce a free trial to every single one. Right. There is right. tons of companies where whenever they do this, they slowly roll it out. I mean, with website A-B testing tools, you could basically show a free trial to 2% of your overall website visitors and just start doing those trials one-on-one, do these onboarding sessions one-on-one, and really start seeing how people are using your product so that you can help them become more successful. It doesn't have to be one day we're product-led. Yeah, yeah. Right, do, <laughs> That's do you scary. just like wake up and you're like, all right, we don't have a sales team anymore, we don't have any of this. It's not, it's not necessarily that, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not this drastic shift. It's, like find a couple basic tactics that you can introduce. Exactly. And what what are some examples of that? So you mentioned like a free trial is is one tactic of product yeah. growth. What are some others? Yeah, so there's definitely whether you want to do a framing model or even it doesn't necessarily have to do with your product. It could just be um, creating a a product that is not necessarily completely aligned with your product, but let's say something like a UTM builder where you're creating this super powerful marketing asset for people to use, get a ton of value out of, and it's a lot more useful than a lot of white papers and guides out there. So um, that is one way you can really at least get a whiff of how does product-led growth work and how could it work for our business? Right, so create like a a secondary sub project and try to grow that as a product on its own. Yeah, and I mean, there's lots of examples of that, whether it's like HubSpot's website creator, yeah. or even the Word- classic example, yeah. yeah. Or WordStream, they had incredible success for their AdWords grader. And so after talking with Larry Kim, it, it was one of the biggest growth levers of their entire business. And it just gave people a little bit of a sneak peek of how smart their solution was and how they could fix their ad programs. Yeah, got it. And uh, so let's now say that I, I'm a listener, I, I'm at a company that is already doing some product-led growth type stuff, like we have a free trial or we have a, uh, we have a system uh, around that. How do I improve what we're doing now? Yeah, so if you're already having that free trial for your model, one of the things I really recommend doing is using what I call the bowling alley framework. So I used to be terrible at bowling, still probably am. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually pretty good at bowling. Let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> but even if you're pretty good, yeah, let's, yeah. let's hear it. Uh, do you get the ball in the gutter? Uh, actually, very rarely. Really? But I've been bowling since I was five, so I'm a little okay, unfair of okay. an example. I'm talking to the expert here. <laughs> for everyone else yes, listening. Yes, everyone else. I've <laughs> yeah. watched many people try to bowl. It's not me. like that. <laughs> So when you're bowling, chances of getting in the gutter is so high. And so you think about bowling, um, the first time you're gonna play, chances are, I could almost bet money on it, that you're gonna get it in the gutter. And so 
the same thing happens whenever it comes to your product. So someone's signing up for your product for the first time and they're probably gonna go in the gutter. And the vast majority of people, 40 to 60%, according to Intercom, they, they try out your product, they never come back. And so that is a ton of gutter balls yeah. that you have to account for whenever you create your onboarding experience. So in order to help people get strikes in your product, what you really need to do is create a straight line. And that is basically cutting out all the unnecessary steps in your onboarding and really just crafting that journey so that it is almost harder to not strike out. And so you just have the bare minimum steps. And then when we think about the bumpers, you still wanna have two bumpers. So the first one is the product bumper. And so this could be tool tips or guides within your product. And what you're really doing is just showing people through your product how to actually do it. And by making it really simple for them, whether it's the first time or even the fifth time they're using the product, just showing them how they could actually do a lot of these things so that they can keep continually striking out yep. and feeling like they're a boss like you yeah, yeah. at bowling. <laughs> and then the last part of it is the conversational bumper, yep. which is thinking about, okay, people aren't gonna stay on this product forever. We all know that. <laughs> and so we have to really bring them back. Yep. And so the best part, whenever you think about the conversational bumper is just, catch people where they are. Like if it's Drift and they sign up and they don't actually upload the script on their website, send them an email about that. Get them back to that part of the journey where they are so that they get back on that straight line and back to seeing where that value is as soon as possible. So um, yeah, that's how I would recommend if you already do have that free trial for your yeah. model, how you can really optimize that. And really just that the mindset of the bowling alley framework I find helps a lot of companies. Interesting, So, so you can think about it uh, is there like a bumper to start with? Like how, how do I say, all right, I'm, I'm listening to this, we have our freemium model, it's working pretty well, we have pieces, like you mentioned tool tips, we have yeah. some of those, like cool, great. Uh, do, do I sit down with my team and, and audit our flow? Do I you know write out like, here's all of our bumpers, here's all, what, yeah. what do I do? Yeah. So I think if you're gonna start, it has to be starting with a straight line because if you're just bumping people to all these other <laughs> yeah. parts of the product, it's not going to be too effective. Right, don't just start throwing bumpers on. Yeah. That's not where to begin. Yeah. Exactly. So start with a straight line. And how I do it is really simple. So I go through every single step in an entire onboarding flow. And I'm just taking screenshots of every single step. Yeah. And I put it all in Trello. And once you have every single step from the point of signing on to the point of first value, um, have it there, but then it's a matter of just doing the green, yellow, red light system. And so if it's a red light, that means it's something that you can totally get rid of. It doesn't affect the mm -hmm. user experience at all. And then you just cut that step out, simple. And then there's usually yellow steps, which are the ones that are a little bit more complicated, or it might be like, this is something that would be great for a third time user. Yep. And then you can delay those and introduce them at another point in time, which is more suited for that person. And then the green lights are just the things you stay with. And that is your straight line. And so you're just trying to line up all the green lights so that it's so easy for that person to strike out whenever they go into that product. And so I often find even without the product bumpers in place, if you go through those steps and build that straight line, you can see a serious lift in your conversion rates. And just to give you an example, one company uh, called snappa.com, they're basically a tool where you can create simple graphics. And so they had this one step, which was to activate your email. And it's yep. like a classic, classic <laughs> example in all SaaS companies. A lot of them do it for security purposes. And so we looked in the data and we saw, oh, like there was 27% of people who don't actually go into that product because they never click that because email. That, yep. And then you think about it in your own experience, you're gonna go to that email, you might see an email from your boss, you're like something else that's actually high priority. Right, and you wind <laughs> up, yeah, way off in the gutter, cause yeah. you're, yeah. And then you're like, you're stuck in the gutter. You're never gonna go back into that product. Yep. And so when we delayed that one step, so first time users could just go straight into the product, uh, we saw that the free to paid conversion rate for 27% of those users stayed constant. And so that is just a perfect example of if you build that straight line, eliminate some of those steps or even delay them, um, you can see a serious lift for your business. Got it. And, and the, the straight line is to, is that what, to what people would call like the aha moment, the, time, the value moment? It can be, but it can also be a lot more simple. Like we think about Drift, perfect example, like that first moment might just be uploading that script. 
And then the second time they come into the, the platform, hopefully there's a conversation waiting yeah. for them. And so it's just thinking about like, okay, what are those those big milestones that you could really draw people towards? Like there's the first strike, which is it's good, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wanna keep <laughs> them coming back. And you think about it like a gun, if it's um, looking at Drift and the terms of uploading the script, like you just locked that, you put the bullet yeah. in there. And then as soon as that conversation comes, boom, like it fires yeah, off yeah, yeah. and that is a great trigger. Yeah. Someone just got value from your product. They want to check out your product. They want to get out of that gutter, back into that right, product right. and strike out again. Again. And so right. that's the the exciting part about the bowling alley framework when it works. And you got to give them a, a a clear line back when they return to that action. Like yeah. it, it's with every every growing action that someone might take in your product. You think about all right, like what is the clearest straight line to this first action, and then okay, they're coming back. What is the next action that they're going to take? Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Um, any other things about? Product led that like we didn't touch on here that you might want to throw out there. Or you feel like we gave we gave a good uh, good overview and, and yeah. framework. I think for the people who are already having the free trial free model, just give that a try. Even if you were to take away one thing, just go ahead, try that straight line onboarding, and find all those steps. Take a screenshot. I know it'll seem brutal and repetitive, but do that. Find out like what are those actual green lights that we need to have here and try and limit or cut out as many of those other steps as you can. And you'll probably see that there is a, a pretty big lift on the other end for your free to pay conversion rate. Great. All right, well, Wes, thank you so much for, for joining today. Uh, for all of you listening, thank you as always. Really appreciate it. If you have uh, feedback, questions, I'm just gonna go through the same list that I always go through. Uh, you know where to reach me, Matt at drift.com. Uh, I love, love hearing from you and, and the things that you find. Uh, valuable and other things that you would love to, to hear on this podcast in the future. So uh, with that, Wes, thanks again. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.